started here. Um, so uh, just quickly remind everyone of what we're going to do today. Um, the agenda suggests that we start with a recap from the previous day, but I think we did a pretty good job of recapping where we are at the end, end of yesterday. So I don't think we're going to formally do any kind of recap um, to begin the morning, which means that uh, we'll start with a review of our program of work and where we stand on it and what is um, planned over the next number of years and confirm that it all still uh, looks um, reasonable and whether we're on track and so on. And we'll move to what's termed other business, which um, consists of a few discussion items. One being uh, revisiting the question about a processor rep on the US side. Two being how the uh, MSAB wants to proceed with respect to the unfilled seats that um, exist for the group and whether you think you want to fill some or all of them. We've had Matt uh, nominated for one of those, so we'll make note of that and maybe turn to David to explain the, the confirmation process for that. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the meetings calendar, um, including October, but also beyond. Uh, and then we have uh, an extended break, and you'll remember that we don't have this room, so we will be we will need to get out of here by 10.45. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome to stay for the seminar, though. Yeah. Ah, right. You're welcome to stay for the seminar, or uh, you can and should be reviewing the report that we're going to discuss in the afternoon. Um, and uh, and that's what we'll do uh, to, to end the day today, is to review the report. So the report is mostly drafted. I think we're in the midst of trying to uh, circulate it. Uh, we'll need to add whatever comes out of the morning uh, discussions today to it. Uh, but I think between Carrie and I, we've also heard a few people since yesterday um, mention things that you know they may want to add a little bit to the discussion about. And what we're going to propose is that we use the review of the report as the opportunity to go through that in a bit of a structured way. So where people have something more they want to say about X or Y topics that uh, that the discussion of the report will be an opportunity to raise that. And, and if it needs to be the subject of further discussion that we figure out where and when that can happen. And if it's easy to have included in the report that we simply add that as we go through our collective review. Um, Gary, anything you want to add about our plan for this morning? No. no. Okay. So then any questions from the group about that? No. So then we'll turn it over to Alan to provide us an update and, and description of the program of work and get underway. All right, thanks, Neil and Carrie. Um, here we are, the last day. This will be short, um, just a review of the program of work for the next five years. Uh, this presentation is online, but I think the document is a, is a much better summary. This is just extracting a few tables from the document. <clears throat> and so the, um, since I've started, I've put together a program of work looking over the next few years. We are uh, looking at the next five years, and uh, I've been displaying this as a Gantt chart to give us an idea what uh, we can expect to be doing and where I might be prioritizing things. Um, so on the left side of this chart are the different tasks, and there's really six different tasks, reviewing goals and objectives, uh, refining performance metrics, identifying management procedures, uh, doing the closed loop simulations, uh, developing educational tools, and developing operating models. The, um, the chart shows the time frame starting at this meeting in 2018, going out to the May meeting in 2023, and then shows in the different colors what tasks I'll be 
focusing on what tasks will be doing and what will sort of be lower priority tasks. So darker colors are things that are actively being done and lighter colors are things that have a lower priority but are being done in the background. Uh, green shows subtasks of the main tasks which are shown in blue. So for example, reviewing goals and objectives. We've, we have a pretty good working set of goals and objectives, but as you notice on the first day, I thought it'd be useful to review those. We identified some inconsistencies and noticed that that's something I feel like we'll always be working on. Those objectives may change over time, uh, depending on conditions, and we just wanna make sure that we're working with the most uh, up-to-date and pertinent objectives that we can. Refining performance metrics, I'll be actively um, working on that this summer as I prepare the results. And um, you know that's something too that we'll be continually refining over time. Uh, identifying management procedures. And this has a subtask of identifying those distribution uh, management procedures in green. And you see that's something we'll be working on through May of 2020. And we started doing that yesterday. Closed loop simulations is the fun stuff. And that's why I put it as uh, dark blue because I wanna be doing that all the time. Uh, and that right now we're evaluating the scale um, for uh, review in the October meeting of this year. And then notice we have a little bit of a gap as we develop the operating models, um, the management procedures, and then we begin actively evaluating scale and distribution. And so note, when we start the distribution part of the work plan, it's not that we're gonna ignore scale or say, well, we already determined scale. No, th there's a little bit of feedback there too. We wanna make sure that we identify uh, appropriate scale now and then as we in, in investigate distribution procedures that we identify the appropriate scale given that procedure as well. So the development of educational tools I think is an important task. It's, it's something that the MSAB has um, identified as useful to them and these are things like you know just materials that are helpful to understand it could also be online interfaces that can help uh, that the MSAB members uh, can take to their constituents to show them trade-offs and show them different ways to view the results, for example. So it, it, as you know, this is a pretty ambitious program of work. So I put that as a lower priority for now, just because we um, I don't have much time to deal with it. As we bring on more staff to help me, potentially we could um, increase that in priority. In developing operating models, this is where the spatial model comes in, or the multi-area model for investigating distribution. And so we'll be actively working on that um, through 2019, and then we'll begin using that operating model or those operating models to um, investigate the distribution and scale component of this. So that's sort of the overview. You can see this is the general plan. At the last meeting, we also came up with this table, which had a little bit more detail on exactly what we're hoping to accomplish in the next three years. So I've put this here for 2018, and uh, this is drawn directly from the report from MSAB 10 in the appendix. And you know, we're welcome to modify this as we see um, needed, but you know, we're on a track here that's, that has a, a Pretty, pretty defined track of things that need to be accomplished and the priorities that need to be done. So let's see, did we accomplish these things at the May 2018 meeting, reviewing goals? We sure did that. Um, look at results of SPR. There was a little bit that I reported there with estimation models, reviewing performance metrics. We didn't do a whole lot of that, but I think the goals and objectives part of that identified performance metrics. We identified the scale management procedures that I'll be working with. Uh, that's the SPR and the trigger, for example. We reviewed the simulation framework, and then we began identifying some preliminary distribution management procedures. So I think we did pretty, pretty good on our program of work for this meeting. At the October meeting, again, I put pretty much review the goals and objectives there. Don't worry, we're not gonna spend as much time in October on those. <laughs> I'm not gonna start off on the first day with, the, with that. I think that was maybe a mistake on my end. But really the goal of the October meeting is to um, review those or evaluate the results um, from the simulations. And 
um, in that process, so, so we're going to evaluate the results for scale with the, um, the task of making a recommendation at the annual meeting just on the scale part of that. That's the SPR, the trigger, the harvest control rule. But we have some other tasks, continue making progress toward the distribution part, verifying the framework of the distribution procedures, uh, verifying the uh, tasks ahead that I have to develop the framework for evaluating the distribution, and then continue identifying those management procedures. And then that annual meeting in 2019, the key there is recommendations on scale, but also begin presenting our findings, our uh, possible distribution management procedures. So really two tasks there. So 2019, we'll have a, a scale component that we're currently working with in our harvest strategy policy. So this is time to begin focusing on the distribution part. Again, reviewing the goals, looking at spatial model complexity so that I can create operating models that are relevant to our hypotheses that cover the range of uh, variability and uncertainty we expect. I continue working on those management procedures and then review the framework that I, uh, the simulation framework. October, continue reviewing goals and objectives, uh, continue working on spatial model complexity with input from the SRB. So you'll be able to see in October that input from the SRB continue identifying management procedures. And at this October meeting, I'm hoping that we're pinning down some more specifics of those management procedures so that I can know, then begin to go away and begin testing my operating model in the simulation. And we can begin to see how things might pan out. And that annual meeting 2020 will basically be an update on the progress. So 2020 is when the real meat of the work begins. Um, it's just going to be a busy year for me again. Uh, continue reviewing those goals and objectives. Review a multi-area model. So this is going to be a model now. This is what we're going to use. And then hopefully at that May 2020 meeting, we can begin reviewing preliminary results so that we can have an idea how things are going to perform. And then we can refine them for then bringing back to the October 2020 meeting where we review those results and then bring to the annual meeting in 2021 recommendations on scale and distribution. So it seems like, you know, I think 2021, that's a long ways away, but it's closer than I think. <laughs> so with that, just some considerations. There's the paper 10, which explains all of this in a little bit of more detail. It describes the six tasks, so consider those six tasks, the descriptions, and the timeline for completing those tasks, as well as the priorities. And then recommend any additions or deletions to this program of work or changes to the timeline um, and priorities. And so I'll just remind you, the, the priority that I have in mind is this year really get the scale working. And then, um, you know, focus on the scale, so I'll be prioritizing that. And then after the annual meeting, begin prioritizing the distribution aspects of that for the next um, two years following. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Alan. Um, we can open it up for questions or discussion. Welcome, Commissioner Alverson. Nice to see you. Um, and any uh, comments, questions from the group about what Alan's presented on the program of work. Looking at the 2020 annual meeting, I was, you know, you have faithfully represented what the work plan was, but I was wondering if you wouldn't want to also include in there a, a second presentation of the distribution MPs we plan on actually analyzing in 2020. In other words, we're giving some preliminary ones in 2019. We're going to get that feedback, spend most of 2019 working on refining them. And then 2020, then you're actually going to analyze them and have results. And it might be good before, you know, that we get some additional commissioner and stakeholder feedback on the ones we're really thinking of running through. Yeah, that's a, that's a good a good idea. So that we make sure we have that commissioner feedback at that point. So we'll we'll definitely shoot to have identified some procedures we plan on um, investigating. And then when we get to the May 2020 meeting. 
we may find with preliminary results that some of them just aren't going to work or some, you know, and then we can narrow down with the commissioner guidance. Alan, I had a question if we go back to 2018, just in thinking about the October meeting, um, we're going to complete the evaluation of the SPR. Um, what do, do you have a sense of what you'll be able to evaluate it against? Like, um, we've just spent a lot of work on, spent a lot of time on objectives. Um, what, what will the evaluation look like? So, um, based on the guidance from the commission from this uh, recent annual meeting, as well as our work here on the objectives, I, I think the guidance from the commission was to prioritize conservation long-term objectives. Um, and then the, the ideas that came out of this meeting were, one, I think we have a, a, a good working set of objectives. We've narrowed it down to probably like five or six objectives, and we can review that during the report writing. But what I would like to bring back are those long-term conservation objectives, see how those are met, um, and then see how the fishery objectives are met. Now, we haven't really well-defined tolerance levels, but I think we're learning the process right now. We're learning how to evaluate. So when I bring that back, I'll, I'll report the performance metrics as sort of probabilities, and then we can see, and then, you know, variabilities, the, the you know, probability of a change more than 15% annually, you know, is 30% or something like that. And then the AAV is 20%. So we would have an idea, we, we would identify more of the statistics and then begin interpreting those statistics relative to the tolerances that we have and the outcomes that are actually there. So identifying now the tolerance for, you know, you want your catch above 80 million pounds 95% of the time, we're going to learn that that's just impossible. So it, you know, it, it's going to be some evaluation. I think we have a lot of experience from the previous uh, meeting last October, and we began to identifying the the area that's of most interest. And now with the estimation error, we just want to see if that area has shifted up or down, and then begin to hone in on one single recommendation. Okay. Seeing any other comments? So, um, going to your last slide, I don't think there's anything you were actually looking for. Just if people have any recommendations, um, and you know, if not, then onwards and upwards. Yeah, and I, I think it's a, it's a good program of work. We spent a lot of time in mm -hmm. October discussing yeah. it. Okay, so uh, then I think we're done with that item and we'll turn our attention to uh, other business. Um, <clears throat> so I wonder, uh, David, we might benefit from a bit of your help here uh, with respect to the um, direction we're looking for from this group regarding um, the processor rep on the US side. So what exactly do we want from this group on that? And then uh, similarly, uh, seeking recommendations about what to do with the empty seats. Thanks, uh, Chair number one or two. Um, the process for, for nominating um, members to the MSAB is still a little un unclear in the rules of procedure, as, as I mentioned on the first morning in terms of uh, all it indicates is an approximate breakdown of the membership by group, by stakeholder group. Uh, the numbers for uh, whether it be for the US side or the Canadian side of the table. Um, and then it indicates that membership is at the discretion of the IPHC and we interpret that as the commissioners. Now we've had a, a couple of nominations for the US processor um, vacant position. Uh, if you just scroll down to that. One is uh, from uh, Hannah, and the other was direct from uh, a, a U.S. commissioner. Uh, and those nominee nominees were Mr. Mike Okanowski from Pacific Seafood and Mr. Joe Morelli from Seafood Producers Cooperative. 
Now, noting that uh, it's, uh, the process is a little unclear, um, as a way forward, uh, a sensible way forward, I hope, is that this group should be making uh, nominations to the commissioners uh, in an informed manner and based on uh, as a representative distribution of those um, nominees as possible. So whether it be by uh, obviously the US, Canada, but then also by regulatory area or region. Um, and then for the commission to consider and uh, either endorse or suggest alternatives based on those, those nom nominations. So as a first step, we need to, uh, you need to as a group decide if you would like to put both of those nominees forward to the commission uh, for their consideration or whether uh, in equal weight or whether you would like to make commentary around those nominations uh, and potentially rank them or, or some other format. Um, and then the second point that we need to consider, I guess, is, is whether that process is considered satisfactory or desirable, uh, and you can make comment on that uh, in the report as well. So first step, uh, Chairs, is to consider those two nominees, uh, whether you'd like to make comment commentary on them, whether you'd like to rank them, uh, and then we, you can put those forward to the Commission. Thanks, Chairs. And then we'll move on to the other items after that might be simplest. Thanks, David. Uh, Peggy. Thank you. Um, I can update those names. Michael Kanowski is no longer available. <clears throat> he went on to the Pacific uh, Whiting MSC board. So we still have Joe Morelli and there are two other processors on the U.S. side who have volunteered to be considered by this board and subsequently the commissioners. Um, what I'm curious about based on what on your excuse me introduction is when we when the commission decides this I'm presuming that it will be the commissioners until we um, until something more prescriptive is written for the MSAB um, and I'd like to know if this meeting would be appropriate for a, um, a suggestion or at least a discussion about how we want uh, new members to be determined for this body but we also wondered, and, and some of this just comes from me, but a lot of it came from our members when I put this um, notice out that we have one person who's volunteered now at the end um, of this, um, at this time period, we've got one person who is a member of HANA. Are there other people in HANA who would like to volunteer for this? Or are there other people they may know outside of HANA in the big world of processors? So I got two additional HANA members, sorry, uh, yes, HANA members. One is Angel Drobnika, who is a Government Relations and Community Projects Manager for APICTA. That's the Aleutian Pribilof Island Community Development Association. Most of us here know that. Um, and the second one is Jesse Keplinger, who is the Fresh Sales Coordinator for Icicle Seafoods. So that gives us three, and we have not received, um, many people here know one or all three or two or all three of these people, and we could probably have a productive discussion about them. I don't have resumes yet. Um, they all asked if they would need to get endorsements from other groups um, to provide the commissioners, which is, close to the process that is used for other nominations. So there's a few things to, I think, um, discuss what the desire of the group is before we go forward. Michelle. Yep. No, Michelle, go ahead. Thanks, Peggy. Can you just um, uh, clarify for me who are, the, who are the three names that we have for consideration? So, um, Angel, Jesse, and then is the third Joe Borelli that you're Joe talking Morelli. about? Joe Morelli. He's the CEO of uh, Seafood Producers Co-op. Thanks. Yeah, so, I mean, I think uh, you know, Peggy's put a few names forward. I, I'm a little unclear myself about uh, exactly what we might be looking for from this group about those names. I mean, I think in general, the the two parties sort of 
figure out who they feel is most appropriate to bring to this table. Um, so I would look to the other US participants about whether they have questions or comments about the individuals proposed or how they feel it would be most appropriate to confirm those people. Thank you, Neil. I, I'd like to sort of try to clarify it a little bit. I agree that we should weigh in on who we want to have join us, but then it enters a little bit of a black box to go before the commissioners. The commissioners likely will want to know as much as what we, or maybe even more than what we want to know about these candidates. Um, they certainly would value our, our uh, mm -hmm. thoughts on it. Um, because they're all members of HANA, I am nominating mm -hmm. them equally. Uh, but, and then there's the time issue. The other issue for me that we need to address is just the timing. Um, for my thought is it would be good to get them in sooner rather than later. We only have one seat to fill unless we decided to expand and fill, um, let's see, no, we don't. We don't, we only have, we have one for Canada and one for the US, right? So these are all US, so these three would vie for one seat. So um, it seems like we don't have enough information for this meeting to make a recommendation for one person. We could get enough information in the next week or so for the US delegation to weigh in via email, if that's what we wanted to do, hand it off to the commissioners to make a decision this summer so that they could be at the October meeting. But I don't want to get too far ahead of my skis. Dan. Uh, thanks for, Peggy for bringing that forward. I mean, I agree it'd be nice to have the seat filled in October sometime. And I appreciate the way Peggy kind of break it out is do they need, <clears throat> I mean, they need to send some resumes in so the commissioners know a little bit about them, but do they also need to start a campaign for industry to support and I think, you know, if we were to forward all three names, as Peggy says, as they're all equally qualified from our perspective as experts in the industry, you could just use that as representative of whether or not industry thinks they would be good candidates and let the commissioners pick based on the resume and be able to essentially fill both tasks of, are these people acceptable to MSAV? Are they acceptable to the industry at large? And based on that endorsement of, you know, the three finalists, let the commissioners decide. Okay, I, I'd be curious to hear from others about whether you, know, you share Dan's view that you have enough information about these three individuals to be you know, commenting on a recommendation or support for them, or if, there, or if there is something you would like to say about the information required to inform such decisions or recommendations. So Peggy's mentioned the idea of a resume or, and or the idea of you know, seeking endorsements. Is that something that, uh, is there anything else beyond that? Craig? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks, Michelle. So, um, Bob and I were just chatting a little bit, and so, yes, we agree that we'd like to fill the seat by uh, October, so we as commissioners would be able to do this either by a teleconference or email, whichever would work. Probably email would be work fine. Thinking about what information may be needed, yeah, I think a resume would help, but also uh, probably endorsements uh, as well would be useful to understand, you know, um, that they have uh, support from their uh, I'll say constituents, that's probably not quite the right word, but thinking about how people here came to around via the table, it was kind of a similar process. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we should follow that as well. Okay, so then what I'm hearing is that uh, in terms of process steps, it might be something like this. We would be seeking resumes from those individuals and seeking some effort or, or uh, uh, form of, of uh, 
endorsement or an indication of their support within the U.S. delegate support within the U.S. delegation for them as participants, and that um, <clears throat> that information could be s probably submitted through the Secretariat for um, the consideration of commissioners in time for them to make a decision such that the individual could participate at the October meeting. Yeah. So would there be a decision point at the MSAB U.S. delegation level? If, if I could chime in, um, it would all need to be done at the MSAB level or you could restrict it to the steering committee level. It's, it's up to you. Uh, the steering committee certainly has that um, mandate, but I would imagine given the importance of the uh, positions on the MSAB, you would want commentary from the entire MSAB. Um, and noting that we have a total of nine vacant positions uh, on the MSAB, which we're going to uh, walk through where we were going to walk through briefly in terms of a, a general discussion on each um, and noting the desire to seek additional information uh, and, a, and a more clear process to finalize those nominations and, and elections so to speak um, I would suggest that for all of the positions then uh, we go out for more of a, a formal process calling for expressions of interest what that could look like is that the Secretariat could send out the list of positions that are currently vacant, um, the MSAB terms of reference and the expectations of, for those positions. Uh, for a 30-day self-expression uh, ex of interest period, um, individuals would then put in their expressions of interest, they would garner support, um, whether it be nominations from, from other, other parties, um, and at the end of that 30-day period, the Secretariat would distribute that list with the information to the MSAB for um, a, a ranking or approval process. And it's that process where the MSAB would need to nominate and second individuals for each position to go to the Commission. And so if that is acceptable, it's, it's a more structured, more formal process. It gives um, all parties the ability to nominate themselves or to put in an expression of interest and then the MSAB to actually go through the consideration of that process. It would obviously take some more time uh, on your part and you can choose to participate or not, uh, but it does lead to a more structured, more formal process. Could you perhaps comment on um, the timing of how that would happen relative to future MSAB meetings and when we would expect to actually have new people on the MSAB if we did things that way? So assuming we filled all the positions, uh, it means that then we don't even need to fill ad hoc vacancies as, as they arose uh, and they would just happen whenever they arose. Uh, we'd call, put out an expression of interest to fill a vacant position in the future, um, have a standard 30-day comment period, then provide that nomination to you for consideration and passing up to the Commission for intercessional decision. Um, so post this initial round, it would just be on an ad hoc basis because everything would be would be filled. Um, for this round though, um, it sounds like it might be hard to get uh, get some people on for the October meeting or it would not be hard to get people on for the October meeting. No, it would be quite simple. Um, so immediately, as of tomorrow, we could send out that express call for expressions of interest for a 30-day period at the close of that 30-day period. So 31 days, we would distribute those uh, expressions of interest to you, uh, and we could restrict that to a seven-day comment period. We could collate those comments from AMSAB and simply send them straight to the commissioners for an intercessional two-week decision, uh, which would be plenty of time for the October meeting. Michelle? Thanks. So um, I had a, a couple of side conversations, uh, even with the, the resignation of, of John Woodruff, as to whether or not we needed to add another U.S. processor to fill that seat. Um, as In my opinion, I think both um, Peggy and um, Chris represent the processing communities um, very well on, on the MSAB, and I'm also uh, wanting to keep the group uh, as, I guess, a, as small as, as possible. We are a very large group already, and 
when I look around um, the, the table, uh, I don't really think that there's any sector or group that is underrepresented or that the MSAB would benefit from having additional representatives from a, a particular sector on the group. And with Alan's uh, walking through of, of the program of work for the next few years, I think it could potentially um, uh, slow down the process if we had additional new members come on board and, and have to get up to speed on the conversations we had around setting objectives for scale and distribution. At the same time, we're trying to review the, the results and, and evaluate them and develop recommendations. So I guess my, my preference would be to not send out or solicit expressions of interest for the other vacancies at this time, but to move forward with a consideration for filling the U.S. processor seat, given we had that seat filled previously and we have a vacancy, and perhaps just even looking ahead um, for the next few years on our work plan, uh, consider not um, soliciting to fill vacancies unless we have uh, any of our members um, resign or, or leave the group. <coughs> Martin. I know on the first day I expressed um, some concern and some interest in having some recreational fishery representation from Alaska and I, I'll stick with that. I, you know, that certainly there are a couple of us here that have general knowledge of the recreational fishery, but I think that given the scope of the recreational fishery in Alaska, if there is a way we could solicit direct representation from there, I think it would be a good thing to do on behalf of the recreational fishery side of things. And, that, and I do not, as I said before, know how to do that. Uh, I think the expression of interest up there might be the way to do it. But uh, but I know that from our Canadian side, the Sport Fishing Advisory Board has endorsed me as a representation and we feel okay with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that Alaska in particular is a bit of a hole from my, my experience. Yeah, I was thinking something similar. Um, my own observations are when, when this was originally constructed in terms of the number of participants from different sectors and so on, you know, it was before we actually stepped into the process. So whether or not this is the right number of people, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that uh, we need to have all of those seats filled. I think that's a choice we can make. Um, I think, <clears throat> The points that Michelle has raised about bringing in a significant new number of participants warrant consideration. Um, and I wonder, and I don't want to speak for, I mean, ultimately, I think it's, it's a commissioner's, um, it's, it's for commissioners to consider. Uh, but I do wonder if, if there's a middle ground here, rather than sort of sending out an expression of interest that suggests we're going to fill however many seats there are in total that are currently empty if there's something more targeted um, that uh, perhaps the group would recommend to identify where there may be gaps and that you know there those are the things we're seeking to to fill rather than creating an impression that you know we're looking for six to eight new members i didn't quite count all the they could seats, but um, but thinking more specifically about what are our needs. So, Glenn, just a thought in terms of process and perception. I think it would be somewhat awkward if uh, the MSAB was appearing to change sort of the criteria for participation mid-stroke. So, to the extent that the commission has identified at least sort of the general membership categories and we do have these vacancies and this is going to be a very long process it may be helpful for us to put out that request for interest and then if folks don't want to participate in the process i think that's a clear indication to us whether or not they want to continue to engage in it i just get a little bit concerned if we're trying to craft the membership here and how that interfaces with public perception of engagement in this process and then also sort of the expression of interest at least from the commissioner's standpoint so peggy then michelle 
Thank you. Yeah, I I agree that with um, Michelle, but really recognize um, your comments, your point, Glenn. And we've been cognizant of that and sensitive to it since the beginning. Um, and have and so have opened this up to public and pe anyone can listen into it. They can sit in. We can you know hear from them if they have something to say. So I do think that if we added, if if we if we uh, sent out an expression of interest for a, an Alaska sports member and um, added Matt, who's been here for the whole uh, three days here so far. Um, Let's see, filled John Woodruff's seat, then I think we would have six empty seats that have been empty since the beginning. And if we did that, we could stay here. If we add all six, we have to find another place to start working. Um, so for many reasons, I think I would kind of revise my original thought and which was more, the more the merrier and, and support what you say about not offering these seats that have been vacant for all of these um, <clears throat> five years for new people to come in. Um, having said that, I think that we really should provide some sort of orientation for new members, which is a whole different subject. So I'll stop there. Uh, Dave and then Paul and then Martin. Yeah, so if I could just uh, add add to that, I guess. Uh, we do have five uh, new members in the room that have occurred this past year, uh, and it seems to be a, a natural flux in this group to keep turning over to new members. So from a process point of view, I'm, I'm less concerned that we have new members coming and going in this in this group. It's great if, if members were able to stay the, stay the duration, but uh, noting that we do have uh, quite a few new members in the room who we're trying to bring up to speed, and I think Peggy's suggestion of uh, maybe greater orientation, if we were to bring in new members, would, would be would be very useful. Uh, in, in terms of the rules of procedure, the only thing that's stated is, is essentially a range of um, membership categories and up to, for example, we have on the screen at the moment, the recreational sports fisheries um, members uh, up to four. The rules also indicate that efforts will be made to ensure representation is distributed uh, from throughout IPHC regulatory areas. And so the discussion around the Alaskan uh, sports fishing representative is certainly uh, has, has merit. Um, and, and that applies to uh, all, all of the other categories. And so maybe it would help if we just quickly step through those just to know exactly where we are. So if we can start, start from the top, in terms of harvesters, we have a, a full quota from the US um, half uh, and a half quota from the Canadian half. The discussion around uh, those those members is whether that's representative, and you can certainly um, consider it representative from a harvesting point of view, from a regulatory area point of view. So, but there are two vacant Canadian positions there. In terms of the First Nations uh, and tribal fisheries, uh, we currently have uh, the two and uh, and two vacant positions, potentially one from from each from each country. For the government agencies, we have six filled seats from, from the eight. Um, and so the, the top one there was, was filled this meeting or replaced rather um, this meeting. Um, sorry, we have one vacant seat. So we have seven of the eight filled, um, noting that Trent has taken the ADFG position. From a processor, we do have two vacant positions, one from US processing and one from Canadian processing. Um, although given uh, Peggy representing Hannah is covering both uh, US and Canada, um, there's a valid argument there of whether you need to fill that fourth position. Moving down, uh, for the final, uh, as, as I started the conversation here, the, the intervention rather, um, looking at uh, representing, we do have 2A covered. We have uh, 2B covered, uh, and it, it is clear there's, there's a gap in terms of uh, the Alaskan regulatory areas. Um, and, so, and so with that, um, I, I think it's, it's a valid discussion to have about how many you would like to call for, but at the same time, if you're putting out an expression of interest, uh, maybe it wouldn't hurt just to have that expression of interest for all vacant positions, and then when it comes down to us, the commissioners who will decide um, what degree they would like to fill those positions based on the MSAB's advice. Thanks.
All right, uh, Michelle, Paul, Martin. Thanks. So um, agree with the comments of Martin and Peggy and would note that the MSAB had uh, been asked at the annual meeting, annual meeting 93, to specifically identify um, which of these vacant seats we thought represented a gap on the MSAB. And I believe the one that we highlighted was a sport fishing representative from Alaska uh, is what we recommended to the commissioners. Um, so I would certainly um, favor uh, adding um, Matt Damiano to the MSAB, uh, who's been here this week, and putting forth the, the three nominees for the U.S. processor and soliciting um, for the recreational representative from Alaska. I, I do think um, doing a broader a solicitation of expressions of interest. And then if we do get, um, you know, several nominees when perhaps we're only intending to fill the one vacancy, um, that might be a, a little bit more difficult for commissioners to uh, explain uh, to those nominees um, why they perhaps weren't being selected. So I think if, if folks are agreeable to adding um, those seats, uh, filling those seats, then I don't think we should solicit nominations for seats that we're not intending to fill. Paul. Um, thanks, Carrie. So I think Dave said pretty much everything I was going to say, namely that um, the, it, it had a range of two to four, and it wasn't that we were going to fill to the maximum, um, is my recollection of it all. But um, we have clearly identified that there are some gaps in around the room right now, and, it, and as um, Michelle just identified and summarized, uh, we have some people that um, uh, could be nominated and for the commissioners to decide. I think for transparency, though, it would be useful to send out the expression of interest and then see if who comes forward, um, because I don't think we as commissioners want to be in a position of excluding if there is a real need, and we could leave it up to us to decide if there is a gap that needs to be filled through that expression of interest beyond what um, has been said here today. Martin. I just wanted to take a quick second to reinforce Peggy's notion of a, a, an onboarding package for new members as, as a relatively new member to the board, um, trying to, and for someone who doesn't have any experience with MSC processes, which some of your stakeholders are probably most of them are going to be like, there is a tremendous amount of catching up that needs to be done. And some thought through onboarding package that helps people navigate through the list of documents and that kind of thing. Rob's got an excellent PowerPoint, it's another one. Um, but but that type of information would be very, very good. I just wanted to reinforce that notion from my own personal experience. Okay, so let me see if I can capture what, what uh, seems to be the suggestion. Um, sounds like there could be a call um, and that uh, perhaps in that call it needs to be clear that, you know, we're actively seeking to address some gaps, but um, may also consider filling other seats if you know, the commission sees there's a need based on the nominations that come forward. Um, so I'm what I'm taking away is that it does sound like we're thinking of a more general uh, call out, uh, but that how we respond to the, or how the commission responds to the call out is, you know, um, at their discretion. Uh, and that the secretariat would lead that exercise, share whatever nominations come forward with this group, and that this group would, would also have an opportunity to provide advice that could be part of the package that goes forward to commissioners to inform their decisions. Peggy, then Michelle. So, just theoretically, if we if we put a 
broadcast out and get responses, we will be tasked with looking through resumes of potentially um, eight people that we may not want to actually add to our group. Um, or they may be fabulous and we decide that to have a full complement. But it will be a, a certain, I'm just looking at time management, mm. what the task ahead will require of each member of the MSAB. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that would be for Canadian and US. Michelle? Thanks. So um, I, I'm hearing two different uh, timelines. So I just want to make sure I understand that, that we, we're good with um, moving forward with the U.S. processor forwarding the names and uh, asking for their resumes and endorsements uh, to be sent to the secretariat and uh, having uh, requesting that the commissioners do a conference call or by email um, selection to fill the, the one vacant seat. And then separate from that, soliciting the expression of interest uh, for nominations um, with accompanying perhaps letters of interest and resumes that the MSAP could consider at our October meeting. And then we could forward our recommendations uh, to the commissioners following that, um, that meeting for their consideration and whether that occurs through, um, well, and then the commissioners could decide what they want relative to their process for selection. Uh, I'd, I'd be curious to hear from others about that. So that's kind of like a two streams, one to deal with the names that are before us now and one to solicit names for the rest. Um, I'm thinking that, you know, ultimately we're looking for the same information from everyone. Uh, so I'd be curious to hear the group's thoughts about doing whoever we have before us before we send out a more structured call, as Dave put it. Tom? I uh, kind of mixed feelings. I kind of agree with Michelle, I think. I think the group is large enough. I, we've got enough range of opinions from all sectors right now. I don't know that adding more people is going to make really any difference. There's going to be such a catch up at this point trying to figure out what this process is all about. Um, you know, if we feel there's a gap in the sports in Alaska, okay, fine. Maybe fill one position that's vacant, but I, I wouldn't promote adding new positions. I think, you know, I think we've got good representation here now and it's, this group is big enough already. So. Chris. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we've heard there are some gaps and I've heard, we've heard we want to fill those and we've heard that we need to do it in an open and transparent manner. So I think for the, the gaps we want to fill, like I think U.S. sports fishing, I think there's, is there general agreement around the table, for instance, I think, so we want to go out to a tender, a, a, a request, transparent process. Peggy's brought forward some names from Hannah. My only concern there would be if we don't go to a public process on those names, is someone going to come back and say, hey, I wanted to put my name in and the club here didn't allow that opportunity. So I think, I mean, what I think I've heard is that there are some gaps. Let's go out to some kind of public process to fill those gaps. And that way we've got, you know, I, I think if we try and do two processes, I think we could open ourselves to criticism. And that's all I, I just think. So let's just get something out there and do it and, and say, we, we want some information. We do want a resume. We want, uh, I don't think we need a photo, but um, you know you know what I'm saying, like, <laughs> what do we need? And just, you know, and, and maybe some some endorsements from some people in that sector, two or three, just so that there is some, and then I think we're done. And then just get it out there and get it done. Glenn, Peggy, Jim. Yeah, I, I guess I would share those comments as well. I think, um, particularly as this process begins to evolve and as folks and the various groups begin to feel like this is going to gain more traction, I think interest will grow. And I think you are going to want to have people who are participating in the process that represent that. And you certainly want to provide that opportunity to them. Uh, I think intercessionally, much of this could be addressed by 
requesting that people submit their resumes if they have any letters of support thanks if you've already submitted your interest in and in a resume then that would be included in consideration and then that all of that package with all of those names would proceed to the commissioners and to the MSAB for further consideration. And I don't think it would actually take that much time. I suspect that there won't be a lot of interest, you know, from all of these different groups. So I think that you're thinking of a maximum number of uh, resumes that you may need to process or consider, but in practical terms, I think it will be substantially less. Peggy? To clarify, um, are you in favor of sending out a broadcast EOI of all vacant seats or just the ones that we've identified? Well, I took from Commissioner Hale's comments that we were interested in a broad, uh, you know, solicitation for all of the, Do yes, yes. Sorry. Um, thank you, Glenn. Um, I don't think it's defensible for us to only go with Hannah's recommendations. So I think an EOI would be appropriate and, and really critical on the processor seat too. So I agree with what Chris is saying. Um, but I do agree <laughs> that I, I respectfully disagree with Commissioner Royale that um, I don't see any huge downside in us not doing that right now, um, sending out uh, solicitations for every vacancy that's been vacant since the beginning of the MSAB. Um, so I don't have more, any more to add. Jim? No. Michelle? So um, I'm, I'm just trying to get a, a clear sense of what the process is, actually. So not arguing against any of the comments that have been put forward and and what folks would like to do I, i'm just struggling to see um uh what what is the time frame and and how do all the nomination packets get to the msab and and how do we have our discussion and, and decision is that through a separate msab um conference call or something of that nature before uh they're all forwarded to the commissioners or how does that work? Thanks, Chairs. Um, look, I'll, I'll read what uh, I, I think is, is the group's general um, position. Uh, there is a, isn't entire agreement on it. Uh, and the one missing element is exactly the, what the MSAB would do with those nominations. So the text would read something along the lines of, uh, the MSAB agreed that an expression of interest for the vacant MSAB members' positions uh, should be circulated by the IPHC Secretariat. At the close of a 30-day EOI period, the Secretariat shall provide the list of candidates to the MSAB for review, comment, and subsequent formal nomination to the Commission, who will be asked to make an interse intercessional decision on MSAB membership. And so the elements that are missing is a time frame for the Commissioners to make a decision, and I think that's okay to leave that open, uh, and then also the two other elements, sorry. Um, one is what would be called for, and I think, again, you should just leave that um, loosely defined. If a nominee or a candidate wants to put in a single nomination, two-line email from themselves, or whether they want to seek 10 endorsement letters, that should be left open. I don't think you should spend any time um, being very specific there. And so the only other real element that needs to be considered is uh, exactly how the MSAB would consider those EOIs. Um, and so the Secretariat would collate them, put them into a list, put them into a single document with an index, send that to you for review, and then the options are, should you provide some group decision or would you like to make individual comments on those? Or would you like to ignore them completely? So I, I think that's the only element that needs to be to work through. Dave, I'm, I might be misinterpreting. Um, but um, I wasn't gathering that we had really come to a decision about whether to make a more targeted uh, expression of interest call for the um, two or three positions that uh, we've been discussing or whether there really was consensus on sending out um, an expression of interest call about all of the vacant positions. I'm wondering if we need to discuss that more. 
Thanks. Um, I, I, I would agree. It, it certainly needs some more discussion. Um, the wording that I just gave you was the uh, open and transparent requirement wording that would be uh, consistent with the convention text and the rules of procedure. If the MSAB would like to deviate from that, you should really seek consensus to deviate from that. Um, whereas the default should be open and transparent processes. And so that's the wording that I provided. Thanks. Let's just put it out. I mean, is anybody actively opposed to the, the wording that David's just outlined? Peggy. I'm, I'm slightly confused now. Open and transparent, is that the phrase that you're using to send a broadcast EOI for all vacancies? So my thought is we can be open and transparent and target. target. Thank you. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Chris. I mean, I think, you know, I don't know from our sector, no one's really beating down the door. Okay. So let's just be realistic here. I think let's just send this out broadly to everyone. We've got vacant seats. People who have already expressed interest are going to put in there. Personally, I don't think that we should have any role in reviewing or commenting on anything that anybody's put in that should go straight to the commissioners. I, I just don't think that we want to be involved in that. I mean, if it's open and transparent, I, I, you know, if someone's put their name in to be part of this process, the commissioners should review them and, and with the staff's input. I'm not, I'm not sure I want to be saying who can be on this or not. That's not my, that's not my job. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, I second his thoughts right there. Uh, I don't know a lot of processors. I don't know any recreational fishermen in Alaska, and I'd have a real tough time trying to decide between one from the other which one should be on the MSCB and which one shouldn't. So if, if the resumes were passed around to us, I would probably not comment on any of them except for resumes in my sector. Jim and then Peggy. So I'll just modify my my sort of thoughts. You know, I really thought you know a targeted one would be better. But having listened to the discussion, I agree with Chris in both ways. Put it out broadly. Let the commissioners decide how much they really want to fill. And I do not want to be part of the process of selecting on a board because that's like oh. You want to have a closed shop, you know, um, what looks like a closed shop. You have the shop deciding who comes to get to join. The commissioners have that. That's their, you know, it's a role. Um, these 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 sort of seats or positions we we fill were done by the parties to the to the treaty. So I would just keep it that way. Dave, is there anything in the rules of? Procedure that require the MSAB to play a role in this? I don't think so. Uh, no, there's not. Yeah. Okay. Peggy. Um, so the broadcast EOI is um, less of a concern for me than that we don't step up and give the commissioners some idea, or even a little bit more than that. I would be happy with. And that would bring MSAB in line with all the other advisory bodies in IPHC. SRB is, chooses their own membership from their understanding of who the scientists are that can bring the most to the table. Um, the conference board chooses its membership or approves it in giving, and I know it's a little bit different there because there are so many of them, but same with PAB. We have an application process and we vote these fellows in who want to do this. So I'm not saying that we do that on this round, but, um, and I agree with Chris that people are not banging down the door. So I, I'm not worried about the um, opening it up, um, except that it may just provide all of us with more work. But I, either way, I think is transparent and open. I don't think we're going to risk losing anything if we go either way, frankly, except our own time. But I do think that MSAB should weigh in on who they think. And, and it really sort of boils down to 
you know, is this group of commissioners going to be fair and balanced? And I think they probably will be. They're good commissioners. They understand what we need. Um, but they won't be, well, except for two of them, they sort of don't serve for life. So we may have two US com new US commissioners in 2020. Who knows? Um, or is this group, you know, we're all humans and we can all be, um, we can all lean towards politics when we should be leaning towards science or something like that. I'm, I grant that, but I think it's helpful for us to at least weigh in on who might bring something to this table and who, you know, might not, but, but would be seen from the commissioner's standpoint as a good ad. So it's all speculation. And, and as we've got commissioners now, I'm happy with them deciding this round, but I do think we should have a role in it. Chris and Jim. Um, I, I just think it's within the commissioner's purview if they would like to decide to seek MSAB's input on potential new candidates. I, I would, I'm uncomfortable with making it a requirement. Um, I think it just sets us up for nothing but possibly a problem. Um, and I just think that it's the commissioners can decide, and and if if uh, uh, someone is proposing to put in a uh, you know respond to the EOI and, and put their name in, they can have individual members of the MSAB can endorse them in, in in letters and stuff. I mean that's that's an option, but to have them come here, it's it's like I mean, I, I just I think that the commissioners can decide if they want to seek our input or not. That's up to the commissioners, and they might decide to you know that's within their purview. I. I'm not comfortable with it being part of the process, a mandatory part of the process. Jim and then Michelle. Yeah, so, so, agree with Chris. I just want to clarify for the conference board. We don't select members. There is a there is an application process, and if you meet the criteria, unless there is it, you meet the criteria, you are a member of the conference board. It's not a selection. It's not a well. We will weigh it back and forth. It's here's my organization. Here's how we fit the criteria. The chairs review it. If it doesn't meet the criteria, then we send the person or the organization saying, you know, unless you can provide us. It's not. But how do we know the criteria for, for this part? Because there really isn't a set of criteria that specifically, like that specific, like we, and that simple that we have like things for the conference board. I don't know how the PAG works. So I, you know, I defer back to what, you know, Chris was saying and um, that if we if the commissioners want input from people that may have some specific knowledge that would be useful that's their judgment to make and and we're just people that work together and we work together with new people that come along michelle thanks so um i i I'm not exactly sure um, what what you're proposing, Chris. So I heard that you don't want the MSAB to have a role in reviewing and making recommendations to the commissioners. But I also heard that you um, seem to want the MSAB to be informed of who the nominees are, and or if you're just wanting those to go straight to the commissioners, and then if the com if individual commissioners have a need or a desire to get input from the MSAB as a whole or specific MSAB members, you're looking to the commissioners to reach out and say, um, hey, do you guys, what, what do you know about these nominees? And, um, and I'll just say that uh, I would prefer that the MSAB at least be provided with a list of who has submitted their who has who the nominees are that are being forwarded to to the commissioners and um, I I did uh, do uh, have a concern with uh, one of the nominees that came in for the US processor seat uh, but but was not aware of what nominations had come in for that processor seat and so um, Without knowing who those people are, it's it's difficult to then uh, convey any thoughts to uh, the commissioners that will be making this election. Okay, sorry if I wasn't clear. I mean, the way I see the process working is that an EOI is sent out 
um, saying that these are these vacant seats. And then there's a deadline and get your information in. And as uh, David has said, uh, keep it fairly general, let uh, some latitude as to what people are required to put in, it's up to them. I'm fine with that. So then these deadline, these deadline would come, the applications would be in, those would go to, the staff would collate them and they would go to the commissioners for review and discussion and decision. And it's within the commissioner's purview who they want to seek it, you know, they could ask the staff for input, they could ask uh, MSAB for input, they could ask certain members of MSAB for, I mean, that's within the commissioner's purview. That's all I'm saying. Um, I, I just think that's a, uh, the way I, I think the process would be most effective and most transparent. Can I um, make a suggestion? We've been on this topic here for a while and um, and both Bob and I have heard the discussion and uh, I would recommend uh, following what uh, Chris has outlined along with the point of uh, we would consider uh, the need or not for MSAV to be involved. And um, we do recognize that there are vacancies um, that are uh, have been identified by this group that should be filled and we'll consider that as well. And um, we would set something up, I guess, sooner than later so that we could make a decision so that uh, any vacancies could be filled for the October meeting. Yeah. Dave, do you wanna try and summarize? Sure. Or, yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks, chairs. Uh, I, I think um, Commissioner Isle's intervention uh, sort of sums up the process that the commissioners would like to see um, to, fi to fill these, these, these vacancies or potential vacancies. Um, I think then that, uh, and I'll just read the text again, and uh, we can see if we can move forward from there. Uh, the, the first thing is that, of course, that the fact that we've spent uh, 45 minutes on this shows how important this group is becoming. Uh, and the subject matter to all of you and also to all of the stakeholders who could potentially be interested in this meeting. Uh, and therefore, I would, would encourage a more broader uh, notification of, of the potential vacancies. Uh, so the text would read, the MSAB agreed that an expression of interest for the vacant MSAB member positions should be circulated by the IPHC Secretariat. At the close of a 30-day EOI period, the IPHC Secretariat shall provide the EOIs to the Commission who will be asked to make an intercessional decision on MSAB membership. The MSAB would also be provided with the EOIs for information purposes. Um, and then just leave it at that. Is that acceptable at this point in time? Okay, that was helpful. I thought uh, people raised a number of good questions. I think we've landed on something that is good enough. So, uh, last item, um, other under other business, is the meetings calendar, and I think Alan's just going to bring up uh, our upcoming meeting dates, and we'll uh, discuss whether there are any changes needed. Okay, so the, the October meeting um, for the MSAB is currently scheduled for uh, October 15 to 18, and that was um, listed in the annual meeting report. And I, I just wanna note that on the first day, uh, there was a mention uh, to, to visit this date. So are there any comments on this week? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, chairs. I might jump into this one and try and save us a little bit of discussion time. Um, the the meeting was originally moved for uh, a number of logistical reasons. Um, however, there's been a strong push by uh, some members in the room to move it back to the original dates. Um, the, the secretariat obviously has no particular position on whether it should be uh, retained as it is currently shown on the website or moved back to the original dates, which is a week later. Um, and I understand that there are a number of um, 
US uh, members who would not be able to make this uh, week, the October the 15th, due to other commitments. Um, and so the question at this point is, should we move it back to the uh, original dates, which is a week later than October 15th, to accommodate those, or whether there are other members who can't make that second week? And so if there, maybe we'll do it that way, Chairs, if there are, is there anybody in the room who cannot make the dates a week later than what's currently shown on the screen, October 15th to 18th, so it would be the next week. Is there any members who could not make the following week? Noting that there's no indication that uh, and people wouldn't be able to make it. Um, if it's okay, Chairs, I think we can simplify the process and move the dates to the week later. So that's the 22nd to 25th? Yeah. And a similar um, agenda as we had here, I imagine, starting in midday on the Monday, going all the way through Thursday. Thanks. So, um, Dave, just to confirm, when you mentioned the logistic um, concerns, uh, is it are is it okay to have the meeting October twenty second through the twenty fifth here, or is it some other venue? Thanks, through the chairs. Um, so the, that's the next discussion. Uh, we, we could always make it work in this room. However, we have also had a, a direct request from the commission to uh, broaden the uh, stakeholder outreach of this group, uh, particularly led by the secretariat and supported by MSAB members. And so one of the proposals that we are currently considering is uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, taking the MSAB on the road. Um, so what that would specifically mean is, for example, taking the MSAB to um, Anchorage, Juneau, Sitka, um, Port Hardy, whatever the case may be, so that we can have a greater observer base uh, in the room. Uh, and, and the reason we haven't done that previously is we haven't felt that the uh, content from, from the work that Alan's been doing has been uh, ready for a more general audience. Uh, however, if that was to occur, we would certainly cater to a, a more general audience for uh, whether it be an hour or two on the first morning to provide overview of the process uh, and uh, therefore increasing our exposure. So that, that's one option. But uh, in more specific response to your question, we could certainly still fit it here if we, if we had to. Thanks. Okay. There, are we going to try and do the same with meeting dates beyond October, or are we we would address that later? I don't, I don't, I don't know. They, you know what? I can put up the calendar um, <clears throat> just so we're aware of where the we have a three year meeting outlook. I don't know if there's a different place to look. I just look in the annual meeting report. And there's an appendix. Uh, I hate this. We don't want to look at the budget. Here we go. So there's a row for uh, the Management Strategy Advisory Board. Here's the 2018. We've now changed this date to the 22nd to 24th. Um, and note that for 2019, 2020, we already have dates set aside. Um, we agreed at either the MSAB 9 or 10 that we would expand these to three and a half um, day meetings. So we're, we're blocking out four day blocks. Um, so uh, May, early May, late October, early May, late October again. Um, Just to clarify on October 2018 meeting for planning purposes. Is that scheduled for Seattle? Is that firm or are we considering other locations? <clears throat> and when would we know what those locations are? So at the moment it's scheduled, the default is Seattle. Uh, and if that was to change, we would certainly notify you as soon as possible. And I know that doesn't give you a very firm answer, but the default is Seattle is, is all I can give you at the moment. And if the commissioners were to increase the number substantially, we could either look to host it here in Seattle in, a, in another venue or uh, take it on the road. 
Well, I would just put out that the sooner we would know the venue, the easier it is for us to plan our travels. And if there's any, you know, additional travel that hinges off of this meeting, it makes it much easier to accommodate. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me the uh, the the geographical location is the key bit. The actual meeting venue is of secondary Correct. importance. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's probably the priority to confirm as soon as possible. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. I think that brings us to the end of our uh, meeting for the morning here. Um, so uh, we are going to spend some time incorporating the outcomes of our discussions this morning into the report. Our intention is to circulate that to all of you um, very promptly so that between now and lunch, you'll have a chance to look it over so that when we reconvene at one, uh, Theoretically, you've had a chance to sort of identify where you may have comments about the report and, and that will help us move through it more quickly in the afternoon. So just to remind folks, we are leaving this room. A seminar will be in here. And do we, do we, can you just maybe just outline where people could um, be in the building? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So um, the boardroom is reserved for use by MSAB members. If any staff are in there, just kick them out. But no, <laughs> um, uh, the, if um, if you need more room, um, we of course have the chairs right there in the um, in the foyer. We um, people are welcome to go use my office if they would like a little more private space. Um, uh, the conference room may be available, or yeah. So just. Just let uh, myself or Steve, Ian or Dave, um, know if you you know want anywhere to to go. But the boardroom should fit most people, um, and it's probably raining outside today, so probably outside is not the best option. <clears throat> and I imagine we'll um, this room should be available uh, again, set up like this by about 12:30, and lunch will be served at 12. Yeah, so if I could just chime in there, we are only probably five minutes away from having the report ready because there was only one change made to the program of work. Um, and we will email that to all of you in Word and PDF format, and the five copies will be printed and made available uh, in the boardroom in 15 minutes. Thank you. Um, the appendix, sure. Yeah, I can do that. There are, there's already appendix.